This is our first breaking news report, and it couldn't be bigger. We're talking about the SEC SR 2021 801 filing. From here on out, known as the 801 bomb. We're gonna sum up what the 801 bomb is, how we suspect it will affect the market, and what SNN suspects will happen to GameStop and AMC stock. The main thing to note about this rule change is how SLDs are being handled. To be clear, SLDs are supplemental liquidity deposits essentially a down payment of sorts. This is important because SLDs are mentioned in the fourth part to a rule that governs the settlement of securities of members of the NSCC, should they default. Even more important, the SEC is putting in measures at a very convenient time in case members, like our great friends over at Citadel, default on their short positions. By the way, NSCC stands for National Securities Clearing Corporation. They're a subsidiary of the Deposit Trust and Clearing Corporation, also known as DTCC, which is the capital market company essentially responsible for keeping the American market in check due to them being in charge of settling the vast majority of our securities trading. The new rule is the NSCC's way of ensuring they can complete settlements on behalf of its members, should they default on their obligation for a security. <coughs> if you can't meet your short position obligation when your contract expires. There are three other ways for the NSCC to manage liquidity risk, but the new rule change focuses on the fourth method, QN, supplemental liquidity deposits. It's important to note how these deposits are currently being handled. The NSCC usually calculates the requirements for SLDs from members no later than five days prior to the option's expiry activity periods usually on the whole on the third Friday of each month, somewhere between the 15th and the 21st day of each month, or every Friday. The nearest and biggest SLD deadline, if you didn't know already, is the quadruple witching day on March 19th. Be sure to mark this on your calendars. The NSCC, prior to the 801 bombing, calculated this by reviewing members' trades over the last 24 months. They then calculated 30 or fewer members' trades who presented the largest liquidity risk over the aforementioned time and made them pay an SLD proportionate to their calculated risk. This is done no later than two days prior to the expiring of the options. Provided everything goes well for the members, their SLD is returned no later than seven days later. If it doesn't go well, that sum is used to ensure the member's obligation is fulfilled by the NSCC. So now that we've gone over how the NSCC is handled in the past, let's examine the change. The NSCC wants to calculate the requirements for SLD from members every day. Rather than attempting to guess the sum they would require in excess of the NSCC's capital based on the 24-month history built around only the option date, they will instead just take the sum of their risk each day, subtract that from their available capital, and what's left over is what the member has to pay as a deposit. Sounds simple enough, right? Yeah. Except this could account for billions of dollars being unavailable to those members who are billions in the hole on another short position. This is a direct response to an acknowledgement that the NSCC members' day trades can cause just as much chaos as their options expiring. The change, therefore, would put those same 30 or less members on the watch list. Except this time, the NSCC would calculate their members' exposure to the risk of their trades on a daily basis. The change also allows the NSCC to send back the SLD the next day instead of holding it for 90 days, which was the case pre-801 bombing. And now I'll present you guys a theoretical example of what this looks like. The NSCC would be able to turn to someone like Melvin Capital and say, hey buddy, you're on the hook for what we calculate is a price spike of up to $100 today while you're short at $4 for 500,000 shares. So go ahead and cough up the value of a $96 share at 500,000 shares as insurance. Thanks. For those not gifted an instant arithmetic, that is a whopping $48 million. And oh, you have to make this payment within one hour of notice too. But don't worry, we'll notify you an hour before the market opens. Insane, right? If this exposure to liquidity was in the region of two billion for two or more members, the sum required would increase proportionate to the risk and could be bought collectively from those members who are determined to be fucked. This seems to be deliberate in that it definitely could leave those identified as fucked 
with literally no free cash for that day. Further, if a member decides to retire, the NSCC reserves the right to hold the demanded SLD of the day for 30 days. No one gets out alive. The above changes, provided there are no rebuttals, will be effective in 10 business days or on March 19th, 2021. So in sum, there's one overarching thing you can take away from this. The impacts of the GameStop Gamma Squeeze have now resulted in a permanent change to the US stock market landscape. This change could be interpreted as so far-reaching that previous speculation techniques will no longer apply as there is a fundamental change to how the suits play the game. So momentum traders of the past may have to completely reevaluate how they trade as a result of this new SEC filing. In other words, the magnificent, never smelly asshole of the United States market is clenched so hard right now that it could probably split a hydrogen atom if the stock market existed in a three-dimensional reality. Thank God it doesn't. So if you want real value in real time, be sure to subscribe to SNN. We pour jet fuel on the retail investor revolution daily.